Morning, Saturday the 27th of September 2014. Welcome along to another United Kingdom Talk uh, live, boys and girls, live, pinch yourselves, live, uh, live weekly talk show, which you can join in as well. Now, today I am sporting, for those of you without vision, there are a few people without vision, boys and girls. They haven't paid their licenses, so they have no vision. I am sporting today something I pulled out of the cupboard at the last minute, and I'm not sure whether it suits me or not. It's, it's like this white shirt thing, but instead of... Oh, I don't know what this looks... What do you think? It, it's got, got a zip-up that I can seductively... Op- oh, look at that little bit of chest for you. Is that nice? Is that doing anything for you? It's doing an awful lot for me. It really is. So I'm wearing this white zip-up type shirt. I'll stand up and give you a little swirl. There we are. Do you like... (laughs) What does this look like today? Do I perhaps look like, you know, quite... quite... Do I need an accessory? Perhaps. Perhaps a pair of red shades, boys and girls. How's this going now? Eh? This could be a completely new image. Of course, here in the United Kingdom talk, Mirabal Studio, under the bright studio lights, perhaps I should be wearing dark glasses. You know, because all the doctors, they do tell you that you mustn't be under sunlight for too long or you get those, um, oh, what's that called now? Where your lenses cloud over. Um, uh, oh, what's that thing called? You know where they have to have a little operation on your eye and remove the lens? And it all, because it all, all clouds up. Someone tell me what that is. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, oh, gosh. Oh. Well, someone tell me. I've known a few people have this operation, including my father, um, many years ago, where they actually, they, they, they cut into your eye. Literally, they cut under your eye eye into your eyeball and remove this lens because it starts fogging up any idea what that's called well i'm um, apparently bright sunshine does cause this in certain countries they're very susceptible to this because the sun's out all the time of course not here in the uk dear oh dear no. i mean there was there was there was a moment <coughs> excuse me there was a moment of sunshine about three years ago that i do happen to remember and it hasn't been any sense. <laughs> Do the shades work? Do the shades actually work? Do let us know, OK? My email address today, as always, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, now, what's... Come on, someone tell me what the what the eye... Th- oh. Now, that shouldn't be in here, my mobile phone. There it is. Oh. <laughs> cataracts, that's it. Thank you, Sharon. Oh, there we are. Cataracts. I have, yeah, cataracts. You don't want those. So maybe here under the bright television studio lights, I should be wearing glasses like this. What do you reckon? Does that suit? Is is this like a new image? Do I look younger? Is it possible to look any younger, you know, without actually transforming myself into a young child or a baby? People watching this for the first time today, and a very good morning to you if you are, wherever you are, in our sad, lonely, pathetic little world. You know, people that are watching... I must turn that mobile phone off, it's going to keep bleeping at me. Uh, Cataracts, thank you, Terry. Cataracts, everyone's telling me cataracts. Yes, um, people watching this for the first time this morning are probably thinking, is he old enough to be doing a TV show? I think that is what's occurring at the moment. Are you thinking that? Are you new today? Are you new? Where are you in the world? Why don't you send us an email and uh, tell us. Whether you're watching us live or watching a recording, you can always send an email. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, if you're with us live and it's Saturday afternoon on September the 27th, 2014, and it's coming up to seven minutes past 12 UK time, and we're on British Summer Time at the moment, or BST, if you're with us live, you can indeed join in live. There is a Skype. If you have Skype, you can send instant messages, or indeed, call me. It would be nice to talk to you and find out all about your life, and whether it is as sad and lonely as mine. Probably even worse. I don't know. The Skype in is all one word, Chris Reardon. C H R I S R E A R D O N, right? C H R I S R E A R D O N. There is also 
a phone-in number, boys and girls. It is a local London number. If you are in the UK, then it will cost you no more than a local call. And the phone number is 020-8133-6358. 020-8133-6358. OK? I'm hoping on the show today to do a little bit about the Iraqi airstrikes. I want to talk about some new houses. Yes, new houses for young people. Cheaper new houses for young people. It gets better and better. OK, among other things, there's lots written here. Um, Billy. Good morning, Billy in Dulwich. How are you, Billy? Good morning, Billy in Dulwich, who says I look like I've escaped from a mental asylum. Is it? Does it look a bit like that? A mental asylum juncture. Should I go out with this shirt on? That's the question. I'm not convinced I should actually be wearing this. But it was something I found in a cupboard. I don't know where it's come from, whether I bought it or someone bought it for me. It's a white long sleeve shirt with zip instead of buttons. I don't know what it looks like. Uh, good morning to Daniel, who's in Camberley. Good morning, Daniel, who says, is it a boiler suit or a beekeeping suit? No, you'd have one of those... Um, mesh things over your face if it was one of those beekeeping suits, wouldn't you? Have you worked with bees at all? I see, see, still seeing bees in this particularly warm September. They're flying around my new flowers in the garden. Oh, talking of flowers, do you like the sunflowers behind me today? Look at these, these are real. We don't do plastic flowers. No, thank you for... Oh, God, isn't that awful? There's a bloke, actually. There's a bloke... I hope you can't hear this. There's a bloke, one, two, three, four doors, one, two, th three doors down and one across who lives in the flat. And outside his house, oh, it's dreadful. He's got those, you know, those round things that you hang down from the front of the door outside, like green things. Like He's got one of those, but in a pot, right? Number one mistake. He's got one of those in a pot, okay? They're supposed to be hanging down. He's got it in a pot and it's plastic. Oh, it's just hideous. I can't bear plastic... Pl or, or, or what's the other stuff? Silk flowers. Can't stand them. If you can't have normal flowers, don't bother. I go to... You know, when I go to cemetery sometimes to see my mum and dad's grave and I take down some, all those that are planted, I did, and I change them for new ones. I don't go that often. I'll be going again in November when it was my mum's anniversary. Called 15, 14 years this year since my mum's gone. And I will replace all the plants. Well, and you look around and there are these awful plastic plants and um, silk flowers. And they just fade. They just fade. And it's, it's horrible. Some of them are faded so bad. They must have been there years, dear. And there's no colour. They're just white bits of plastic. <laughs> please, please rid yourself of plastic flowers and silk things in the home. Get rid of them, dear. Please do not watch this programme if you have a single plastic... Turn it off. I don't want you watching. Do not watch this show if there are plastic plants in your house. Seek them out. I will give you a chance. Seek them out now and get rid of them in that dustbin. Possibly being plastic in the recycled dustbin. What colour is yours? Mine is blue. Although I don't know, I don't even know if they can be recycled. They're just disgusting and horrible. Anyway, so the bloke down there, he's got this green ball in a pot, right? And I'm, I'm so tempted to get a bit of red paint or something like that and just brush it as I walk past. <laughs> He'll have to get rid of it then, won't he? Oh, it's just horrendous and hideous and awful. So they are my beautiful little um, uh, sunflowers displayed this uh, behind me today and if you're wondering where they came from i didn't actually buy those last saturday um i went to my mate's 50th birthday party his name's richard morris and uh, he kindly invited me and we went to this hotel called the barn hotel which is in not rygate is it right it's either rygate or rye slip i think it's rye slip I think it's rice slip. And very nice. We had a meal. I had vegetarian meal, of course, and everyone else had uh, chicken or something like that. And then we had, uh, I told you about this on Monday's show, then we had a magician who's on ITV2. I can't remember his name for the moment, but he was really good. Very young, good-looking uh, magician who did bits and pieces. He put needles in his mouth and all sorts of things. 
And um, at the end, as people left, and it was all, all very well behaved, you know, there weren't loads of drunk people all over, probably the sort of place that several of the viewers on here, like Daniel, would go to. You know, Daniel in Camberley. I can see him going on sort of someone's birthday party and, you know, and at the end of that, they're all fighting and all legless. No, it wasn't like that at all, Daniel. Yeah, it wasn't in a scout hut, probably where you'd hold something, something like, you you know, a scout hut or a, um, or a community hall. No, this was in a lovely hotel, Daniel. You know, there were no hundreds and thousands of screaming children in tracksuits all over the place. No. This was a... <laughs> this was a very, very nice hotel. Thank you. The Barn Hotel. Uh, look it up, dear. Look it up on your internet. Can you work that? Have you got a fast enough computer to be able to watch this and browse the internet at the same time? Or is it asking too much, Daniel? It was very well respected. And people left around about quarter to 11, 11 o'clock. And um, there were just five of us left after, including Richard. And we sat down on the settee and just talked about things. And it was lovely. It was so nice. So nice. It must have been the best Saturday night I've had out for years. And I mean years. Not like going to a club or something like that, you know. Really, really nice. And I managed to, <laughs> I managed to have two puddings as well. Oh, yes. It was apple strudel, oh, with ice cream vanilla. Beautiful. I had mine and then... Uh, and then I'm sort of searching around and I was, I was, it was actually Richard, the birthday boy. I said, are you eating that then? He said, no, do you want some more? I said, oh, no, I shouldn't really. He said, go on, have this. So he put it down and I had two, two apple strudels with ice cream. No, he'd eaten the ice cream. I got the ice cream from someone else's plate. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> and at the end of it, um, really nice staff. They weren't, they weren't too pushy. You know what, push, oh, I can't bear pushy stuff. I've got, got a little comment about bar staff in a minute I'm going to talk to you about. Um, but uh, at the end of it, they had half bottles of wine. There was a couple of four bottles of wine. And on the table where the five of us were sitting, they bought these. There was about five bottles all together. We've got some wine left over, anyone who wants to take it at home. And I thought, that's bloody good. You know, usually with a full bottle of wine the management will pick it up and put it back in the kitchen and sell it to the next one. No, they gave it all to us. And that's where these flowers came from because they had um, beautiful sunflowers on each table. There was, I think, three of them on each table. And he had this great big bunch. He said, does anyone want to take these home? So I, and Richard said, yes, I'll have, I'll have, I'll have just three, uh, which left one, two, three, four, which left six. I said, well, if anyone doesn't want them, I'll have the other six or I'll have three or two. If so, no, no, you have them, Chris. So that's what they are. And they're a week old. Look, they haven't faded at all yet. Aren't they beautiful? Sunflowers. I love them. So nice. And that was the evening. What a lovely, 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 lovely evening. Not only that, but Richard's aunt, that you may have heard in one of the short videos this week, um, actually jumped out of a plane this week. She is over 75 years old. What happened? She went to a hospital, had some heart bypass operation, and uh, that went wrong. She went back some top bloke sorted it out and she and so she's she's great now at 75 and she wanted to give something back to the hospital so she went on this fundraising thing and jumped out of a plane strapped to a very fit looking man that wasn't barry manilow no but it, it was someone of not equal fitness not not quite as fit as him and that that has that has happened this week, and I think I've got a photo um, to show you at some point today, boys and girls. Uh, not today, but uh, next week in one of the short videos. Okay, if you've not seen any of the short videos, uh, I do one every day, Monday through to Friday, and you can find those by going to UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. UnitedKingdomTalk.co.uk. All right. Uh, some messages coming in. Uh, Daniel says, and you forgot my birthday. Well, yeah, you're being very rude to me lately, and you forgot my birthday. Yeah, well, you're there to be rude to, Daniel. That's why you're there, isn't it? I thought you enjoyed being insulted. You know, and even if you didn't enjoy being insulted, I will carry on and do it anyway. He said, and then you sing me happy birthday late and dreadfully. There was nothing wrong with the way I sang happy birthday to you. There's another one today. Another birthday coming up in the show today. 
I haven't sung it yet because probably once I've sung it, he will click off and I shall lose a number. So I haven't sung that yet. You'll have to wait a bit, Mr. Birthday person, whose name I shall not mention yet. It's coming up. Be patient, dear. Honestly, this is not like McDonald's. It's not like McDonald's. You know, where you order, bang, you want it, bang, 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 bang. Oh, there was an awful man in McDonald's the other night. Because I go in McDonald's. Oh, let me finish. Let, let me finish these birthdays. Um, I wish you would jump out of a plane. No, I'm not going to jump out of any planes, Daniel. Not for you or anyone. How rude of you to be unappreciative of the fact that I sang happy birthday, albeit a little bit late. Albeit a little bit late. Are you telling me you've never turned up late to fix someone's boiler? Oh, yeah, you're one of those, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Halfway through. I bet you are, but Daniel, you're fixing someone's boiler. All these parts are on the floor in little bits. It's like, oh, I've got to go to another job. And you disappear. Isn't that right? Yeah? And you turn up again and you come back three days later. The woman's got no hot water or heating on it. I bet you're one of those, aren't you? Oh, I've got to go on another. I've got. To, oh, sorry. Hello? Yes, I've got an emergency I've got to attend to. Yeah, so I'll have to be back later. You're one of those, aren't you? Like the, like the builders. Oh, I've got another job to go to, mate. Yes. Oh, I know your sort. <laughs> Something else. Where, where is it? So he, 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 um, let me see if I can find that now. He did send something in. Oh, no, no, it's on your Skype, isn't it? I will just read this out for the people to see. So, so they can decide for themselves what sort of person you are, Daniel. Uh, just a moment. Let me go back here on your messages. Ah, oh, there we are. Um, so I, I, I said happy birthday. And Daniel says, can it be a duet with Barry Manilow? Well, not really, because the people he's doing duets with in his le latest album, which I hope you've ordered off Amazon, Barry Manilow's latest album, Dream Duets, he is singing with dead people. And as you can see, I'm not dead yet. I'm not. Thank you, Daniel. So there won't be any singing or, um, what do you call it, or, or duets with anyone. All right? Uh, good morning to my lovely sister, Sharon, who says, you look like Roland Rat in the glasses, do I? I can't remember. How did Roland Rat used to talk? Hello? Hello, I'm Roland Rat. <laughs> Is that how he used to talk? I quite like the dark glasses and the white shirt look. I might try this tonight at my, at my disco. Well, I'm DJing tonight at the, uh, the Rainbows in Coventry. Rainbows in Coventry, DJing tonight. Oh, another long night ahead. I had a nice night last night as well. That was at Colours in um, Basildon. Uh, my sister says, nice, cheerful show. Oh, we all like to... I'm always cheerful, Sharon. You know that. My dear sister was messaged in this morning. She has found the time in her long, very, very full-packed, busy day to sign in and watch today. Thank you, sis. I do appreciate it. Do you like the flowers, sis? Aren't they lovely? I do like... <laughs> She says, I'm moaning a bit this morning. I'm, I, I have not moaned. I'm not a moaner, Sharon. I'm not someone who moans. You talk to my best friend about moaning. That's someone who you want to listen to moaning. It really is. Good morning to Marge, who says, so far, so good. Internet is working this morning and I'm not late. Oh, well done, Marge. Well done, because she's had a bit of trouble with her internet recently. Are you being throttled? Are your speeds being throttled? That happens here in the UK to certain people who don't pay the full price. They pay a smaller price and they expect to have the same service as I get. And you can't get it to you. You've got to pay the money. You've got to pay the money. Um, video is a bit draggy. Might be at my end. I think it probably is, Marge. No, um, no complaints from anyone else this morning. Good morning to the lovely Jason Allen, who's with a very, very nice young lady in a photograph in front of me. Isn't she pretty? What's her name in Cambridge? Who says, good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, Jason. Who's the lady? That's who we want to know. We want to know the lady's name. And good morning to Matt Martins, who is in Canada. And it was his um, wife's birthday. He has been married a whole year. A whole year. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. And it was his wife, Heather's birthday this week. And we sung to her, albeit a bit late again, but she did get the song in. And good morning to Terry Turner. It is Terry's birthday today. And I don't know how old you are, Terry. 
How old are you today, Terry? I'm going to have to look at your picture and let's play. Guess the age now. Let me make it bigger. How do I oh, maximize? There we are, Terry. Let me have a quick look. Are there any lines on your face? No. Nope. No, nope. I think the fat is pushing the lines out, to be honest, Terry. I'm looking at your picture there. That's why I've got lines, you see. I've got lines there because I haven't got enough fat to push me out. Maybe I should can, I should eat more cheese and onion crisps. If I had more cheese... I was very, very naughty last night on the way home. I stopped at a BP garage. Now, where would that be? That would be in Basildon, in Essex. Not far from Towieland. My nephew would be pleased to hear that. Oh, I was very, very close to Towieland last night. In fact... That gay one, Bobby, apparently goes to Colours Nightclub sometimes, where I was DJing last night. I do the fourth Friday of the month there. I have have tried to get another night. I said, well, can I have the second as well? I did drop that in their lap last night to see, because apparently someone keeps letting them down. Because the last two weeks I've been called at like four o'clock in the afternoon and said, oh, can you come, to come and DJ? And it's a bit late by then, you know, I've kind of arranged other things or might be working somewhere else. So I'm trying to get the second Sunday of the month, uh, second uh, Friday night of the month as well there. But we'll have to see what happens. So last night on the way home, I stopped at the BP garage. Nice cup of tea. Because I do like the, the, the tea that BP make. It comes in a paper cup. There's something about drinking tea in, number one, a china cup. Proper bone china cup. And number two, in a paper cup. I quite like it in a paper cup. And it's quite nice tea. I think they must use Twining's English breakfast tea. Now, I've had a cup of tea in Shell before. You know, Shell garages. Oh, that's horrible. Tastes all plasticky. Oh, not nice. Terry. Terry Turner turned up here once, didn't you? A few years ago to assist me with some uh, radio automation software and he bought a little cup of tea from the place down the road only a pound a pound for a cup of tea anyway it is terry's birthday today i think he's probably about 34 looking at that picture so we must sing to him are you ready terry baby thank you to carl wearing on the piano we are happy birthday terry turner is that bleeping that phone again i'm sure i keep seeing that bleep this morning yeah happy birthday happy birthday terry all right do let us know your true age we we need to know your true age this morning thank you uh daniel says i would like to give you a servicing uh my service i don't think so a little bit old for me pardon well i'm sorry you are that's how it is Service. He wants to give Daniel wants to give me a service. Oh, the boiler, you mean? I see. I see. No, you're not coming round here, Daniel. No, you're the sort that would take souvenirs, wouldn't you? You know, I, I'd turn around and there'd be things missing. You know, you'd be walking out with a fifty-inch plasma screen, which apparently is quite old. Fa that telly I've got now is 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 very old. I was told the other day. Cheek. What a cheek. He said, you missed your own great nephew's birthday song. Disgraceful. No, I didn't, know. No, I didn't. Are you a friend with my niece? Do you see my niece's Facebook wall? No, you didn't. It was a private little show that I'd done for them, actually. In fact, I'll tell you what. I did the private show and I've still got it. I will play that out as Monday's short video. My, my, ne my great nephews. It's my great nephew. My great nephew's personal little video show that I recorded for him on Friday and put it on my niece's wall. Not for the world to see. You know, not for the world to see. So it wasn't forgotten at all. Actually, thank you. Thank you. And as you've requested it, I shall show it to you on Monday's short video. So on Monday, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk anytime after midnight and it will be there, Daniel. OK, it will be there. Terry today is oh, 29, Terry. Oh, dear. Oh, you're not aging very well at all, are you, Terry? Oh, gosh. Can I suggest bio oil? Now, I've been rubbing that into my, um, pardon? Face, yes. I've been rub pardon? I've been rubbing that into my face, and I think, you know, 
I think, you know, once you, you see, the trouble is, once once your video shows go higher definition, one does have to look after one's face more. You know, no longer can we have the blurring of six two five lines to cover those little lines that appear. And you have to do things to your face. And it was actually, I have to say, one of my best friends possibly only good idea that he's ever had what is associated with my life and that is to to put on this bio oil and rub it into those old lines yeah anyway terry says thank you anyway you're the second person to sing to me let's meet again and do an entire show together oh i don't know about that terry oh no i'm not good with double headers dear it i, I don't know it doesn't work does it work should we do a little show together? I could come over there with my, you know, with my 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 massive um, television camera and lights and do it, uh, you know, live from where is that place you work, uh, live, Cambridgeshire, Huntingdonshire. What are you going to do for your birthday, Terry? Perhaps, lovey, you can open yet another radio station. How many has it been this year? <laughs> Terry opens and closes radio stations <laughs> like some of the girls up Piccadilly drop their knickers up down up down he's, he's like with his show on off on off all the time all the time he starts the station then it closes and a new one opens what's all that about Terry can we just not stick to one station like I've stuck with this show now for nearly ten when did I start this hang on a minute we might be coming up for an anniversary let me just check now, I, I'm not sure of the exact date I started doing these sad, lonely, pathetic shows. Um, but, of course, when I started, it was audio only. Let's have a look. See if I can find this. I think we're coming up for an anniversary. Ah, oh, nine, nine years. It, oh, nine years. Right. Now, I know I started a little bit before this, but we'll but, but we go with this. Nine, this show will be nine years old on the 1st of October. 1st of October 2005 is when I started doing these shows. How's that, eh? Christ, can you just imagine... <laughs> can you just imagine listening... Listening to this show... Um, All the way through. <laughs> All of them since 2005. Good morning to my nephew. He's with us as well. Everyone's here today. The entire family are joining us. Um, my nephew, Jimmy Butler, who says my my um, my camera isn't very clear. It looks all right this end, Jim. Hang on a minute. Let's just uh, do a couple of automatic things there for you and we'll see if that will fix it. That, that and that. Hey, oh, Jim. Has that helped at all? Give it a couple of minutes. It, it might make a difference. It might not. I don't know. Oh, and I've got the sound wrong as well, haven't I? One minute. Studio sound. There we are. We'll change that and change that. Sorry. Is that any better, Jim? Do let us know. Good morning to nephew Jimmy Butler, who, who, yesterday was in charge of the place he works. How fantastic is that? My nephew has moved up the ladder. Well done, Jimmy Butler. I heard all about it yesterday, yes. Uh, Matthew says, Chris, have you heard about the um, Islamic person that did the beheading in Oklahoma, USA? Oh, no, I haven't heard that one. Hang on. Islamic, what's this? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Is that near you, Marge? That must be near you. Oklahoma beheading. We have a look at this. Oh, gosh. Another one. Here we are. Now, let's have a look on CNN International. Oh, they've got a video there. Um, no, hang on, we can't play. We don't want to play videos. Not allowed to do that. Uh, uh, what's that? USA Today, is it? USA Today. Here we are. Uh, a newly fired employee at a food processing plant in Oklahoma. In, oh, we shut up. In, in Moore, Oklahoma. Is that, is that near you, Marge? Moore? 
allegedly stabbed and beheaded a 54-year-old front office worker. Oh, that's dreadful. Um, he's, Lewis said the knife may have been used at the plant to cut lettuce or vegetables. Oh, my God. After conducting interviews, information was obtained that he recently started trying to convert several employees to the Muslim religion. Well, I'd, you know, I, I don't think... I don't think these, these people are real Muslims, to be honest. They are that, um, oh, what's the word? They've been, oh God, what's that word again? Oh, it's always being used, not re regenerated, re, um, uh, extremist, They're ex religious extremists. You talk to Muslims, and I know plenty of them, and there's nothing in the Koran that says you should go around bloody well beheading people. It's awful. Awful. So I have just seen that, yes. Um, yes, Ma, uh, yes. Uh, Matt also says, just wanted to let you know that the live show video quality is less than it is this morning. Yeah, so that's it. And also, um, on the BBC News site today, Marge says she doesn't like war news. No, well, I mean, but it is. It is. Marge says, I haven't heard about it. I don't watch much news. I am, am of course, in uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, according to the papers, we're about to start uh, bombing. Bombing Iraq. Trying to stop this spread of um, religious extremism. Um, in the Daily Mail this morning, Max Hastings is one of the writers there. It says, so it is to be war again despite Parliament's endorsement yesterday of airstrikes against uh, Islam state, Islamic State fanatics in Iraq. The British people may be forgiven for venting dismay and doubt. Well, I vent dismay and doubt, yeah, but what, what else are we supposed to do? These extremists, they, they don't understand anyone else. How can you be seeking a peaceful... Uh, conclusion to what goes on or a peaceful um, sort out to what goes on there they they are not peaceful people these extremists they're really not i mean what sort of people cut off video video someone um kneeling down grabbing them by the hair and cutting their heads off and posting it online what sort of people are these they don't understand talking Get, I do get fed up sometimes with people, oh, no, we've got to talk to them, we've got to talk to them. It doesn't work. They're still cutting people's heads off. All the time we're talking, more heads are coming off. And then they killed all those people, didn't they? They kept killing people who refused to convert to them. Now, where was that? Was that Iraq? Or was that Syria? I'm not sure. One of those two. Because they didn't convert to their religion, so they just killed them. Shot them in the back of the head. What is the answer? So we're sending over bombs. I just hope that civilians are not caught up in this. And of course they will be, unfortunately. I hope civilians are not caught up in this. Perhaps, dear viewer and listener, you have some idea of, of another method, some other way we could tackle this. Clearly talking doesn't work. And... What, what I find very strange, <coughs> you can almost understand if they abducted soldiers or politicians, people like that, who were at war against them. You can almost understand if those people had been abducted, dragged onto the telly and, disgusting though it is, had their heads cut off. Cut off. You could understand them doing that. But why is it they pull people are, who are on humanitarian missions? That bloke the other week, he was out there to help people. Didn't matter what side they were on. He was out there to help people. They abducted him, cut his head off on the telly. 
And I don't know what else the answer is, because the talking doesn't work, does it? And it seems this is this is gaining momentum. It's spreading. It's spreading through other com- countries. They're knocking on Turkey's doors now, aren't they? Turkey, that's a bit close, that is. And so they've decided um, a, a coalition, a collation of different countries have come together, including Arab nations. And that was very, very important. You have to have Arab nations on your side when you're doing something like this. And they have agreed to do this. They're going to try and bomb them to to push them back. I don't know what else. I'm not a fan of bombing and killing people, but what else do you do? What else do you do? It's like... It's like um, you're at the end of the line. What else do you do? Um... Say there were people trying to get into your house. Now, of course, it wouldn't happen in this country because we don't have guns. We don't have guns in country. Uh, We don't want guns in this country, in people's houses. But say you had a gun in your house. There was a group of people coming towards you. Don't come in my house. Don't come in. And they carried on. Don't come in. Don't come in. They've got meat cleavers and guns. Don't come in. And then they step in. What are you going to do? They're looking at you, they've got a knife in their hand or they've got a gun or something like that and you've got a gun as well. They're coming towards you. What are you going to do? You're going to stand there and talk to them, OK? Try and talk to them. They've picked up the gun now. They're now aiming at you and looking through the little hole in the top. I don't know what that thing's called, viewfinder or whatever it is. I've never held a gun. What are you going to do? Right. Now convert that thought. Are you just going to let them shoot you? Now convert that thought into countries. So there's one country there and they're coming towards you. They're coming towards you. They're coming. To- what are you going to do? You're just going to sit there and talk. Don't be so bloody pathetic. Got to do something. And I don't know what else you would do. Perhaps you have a suggestion. Why don't you send it in on an email and let us know and let's talk about it. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. we got the Skype in. If you want to Skype in today, my Skype in number is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Chris Reardon is my Skype in name. Um, and we have a phone in as well. 020 8133 6358. 020 8133 6358. Marge says, I have to mute this conversation. It will ruin my happy. Oh, OK. Um, Daniel says, um, radicalization is the word, of course. Radicalization. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, we would not even be involved if there was no, no oil over there. Um, Maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I'm. So, do you think the oil is the reason that they're coming forward? No, they want to take over the world. These radicalized people. That's what they want. They want to take over the world. We're trying to hold them back, surely, aren't we? Because if they keep coming forward, that would be it. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co. Dot uk. Let me see if there's any more messages here. Um. Maybe mum's been playing around with the settings again. Oh, that makes sense. Because uh, my sister, she's not very good with computers. Phones. Phones. My sister is worse with phones. She doesn't talk. She, she, she might be on the phone and it'll be held down here at her chin like that. Right? So you can't hear her properly. Or she's got this walkabout phone in the house. <laughs> and it doesn't work if she moves far away from the um oh, what do you call it from from the base unit as soon as she walks away from the base unit the signal goes and she does that I th- i'm sure she does it just to annoy me she moves away from the phone from the base unit and then you can't hear her anymore <laughs> never mind <coughs> excuse me Um, Matt says, Chris, the part that scares us here in Canada is that these ISIS people have sent a message to Muslims in Canada telling them to kill non-Muslims. Yeah, that's what they're doing across the world, Matt. 
That's, but proper Muslims are now starting to speak out as well. I don't know if you saw that. Proper Muslims who follow the Quran and act on their religion correctly have started putting up things on the internet like we're nothing to do with this, this is all wrong. So, you know, th there is hope. There is hope. Now, what else I wanted to talk about? Oh, yes. So I'm watching the news this morning. Um, very good news for young people who are trying to buy a house, boys and girls. Uh, the government, the conservatives, that is, the conservatives have said that if, here's the catch, <laughs> although it's not a catch, if they are re-elected next year, they will build 100,000 houses and for anyone under the age of 40, they will be able to purchase one of these houses with a 20% discount. Now, that is good news. That really is good news. It's still expensive, but perhaps there are people under the age of 40 who thought they would never, ever have a chance of buying a home. Well, if you are a first time buyer and you are under 40, if the Conservatives get in next year, because that's when the next election is. Isn't it funny? We've had four years they've been in there. Four years. Um, the the uh, collation. Um, if they get in next year, they will build 100,000 houses and they will cost 20 percent less than the market value. And apparently the government are going to be able to do this without it costing the government any money. Well, without it costing uh, the builders any money, what they're going to do is reduce all the taxes and that, that builders have to pay and use that money to give people like my nephew, for example, my nephew, who's 17, although he, he wouldn't be able to afford one yet. But then if he wanted to buy a house, he could buy one once they're built for 20% discount. And they won't be available immediately. You know, they've got to build the blooming things first. So maybe when my nephew's 19 or 20, he might be able to afford to buy one. So I think that's good news. But as I say, there's a bit of an election thing there. Young people coming up. Oh, hang on a minute. We're going to get 20%. Let's vote Conservative. You see what he's doing there. But that's fair enough. You know, they, they all do it, don't they? They all do it. They all, all do it. So that's good news. What do you think of that? Is that a good idea? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my um, email address. Uh, what else have we got here today? Let me see. Um, oh, program I watched uh, on the television last night. Now, which one was it? There's a couple of these programs, like, like bailiff-type programs. I think it was Can't Pay, Well, Take It Away. Did, does anyone watch that? Now, I was watching one of them that I had recorded recently. Um, can't Pay, Well, Take It Away. That's it. And did I talk about this last week or not? I can't remember now. I might have talked about this last week. And this particular program... They were talking about celebrities and when they have to send bailiff people uh, type people, court enforcers round to celebrities house. Now, by the time the bailiffs have got this, OK, it's time to act. There's no more warnings, anything like that. So they've gone round to this footballer's house named Razor Ruddock. I think it's Razor Ruddock. Let me just look that up for you. Razor, Razor Ruddock. Is it Ra Razor Ruddock? Let's have a look. Neil Ruddock. Ha ha! There we are. Right there it is. Razor Ruddock checking on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Neil Razor Ruddock, born uh, 1968, is an English former professional footballer, television personality, and actor. Okay. So um, that's who it is there. And so they get to this house, very, very nice house, and they knock on the door, and there's no one in. These are the bailiff-type people, the, the court enforcers. As they're standing there, waiting 
this car pulls up. Well, this woman gets out. You know the sort. Bleach blonde hair, tracksuit top and tight tracksuit type leggings with a child. She's got out of this car. You have never, and she was about, she looked about, she looked about 30, 36, 37, trying to look younger. You know the sort. You should have heard the mouth on this woman. It was disgusting. It was, dis and in front of the child. You know, what about my effing child, my effing kid? It was all like, it was awful, awful. And then she started throwing water at the um, the enforcement officers. Get out, get off my property, get off my effing property. She was going like, all oh, this, get off my, this is my property. Get off, get off. You're not coming in all, all this business. Oh, she was just dreadful. And meanwhile, the enforcement officer, who is really nice, actually, he's an old boy. And he just stands there. He doesn't shout or scream or get angry. So he just stands there and just in complete silence and, and watches her. And that's that's whenever he's on there, that's how he, how he does it. He does. He says, if I lose my temper or I start screaming, he said, then I've lost. I just stand there and let them verbally abuse me as much as they like. And eventually they just run out of steam. So she slammed the door and it cuts to a picture of him talking to the camera and she's, she's screaming down the phone, screaming down the phone at somewhere. And now and again, the window opens and she, she, she swears more out the window. You know, remember the little girl or little boy, I can't remember what it was now. They're in there as well, listening to all of this. And I thought, what a disgusting piece of human life you are. Screaming and shouting at people like that. Absolutely no respect for you or anyone else around you. She was awful. And then, then the, the, the footballer turns up. And what it is, they owe money on dog kennels. I think it's about £3,000. I don't know the whole story, but it turns out they owe money to dog kennels. You know, it's gone to, she's not been able to get the money out of them, the person who owns the dog kennels. And um, eventually um, she's gone to the high court. And once it's gone there and it's, and it's gone to the enforcement officers, that's it. You don't get any warning. They just turn up. They just turn up and they want either the money or goods to the value of the money there and then. Right. So this car turns up and here comes the footballer. And I thought, oh, we're going to get to see a nice fit man. Oh, my God. He got out of the car. Well, I think he's been eating a lot. That's all I'm saying. He was massive. It wasn't the sort of person at all that you that you saw get out, that you thought, you know, you were going to see get out of the car. And cut a long story short, which I'm not known in doing, boys and girls, uh, he pays, uh, he, he agrees to pay so much per month or agrees to make one payment. And the enforcement officer took it at his word and went away and said, OK, first payment, whenever it was, in two days' time. Well, guess what? He didn't make the payment. And then they spoke, managed to get him on the phone, and he, and he said he had an agreement, he'd made an agreement with this dog kennel that they would pay them £250 a month. He then rung up the dog kennels, the enforcement, and she, he made, made no such call at all. And that's where I left it, because I had to leave it there and come up and say hello to you on this Saturday morning. But the woman, oh, she would just, you would never want her as a friend. The mouth on her. The mouth, and she's not the only one. You see them out, don't you? Oh, you want to walk around London late at night and hear these women. These young girls that come out all pretty, they have a cup of drinks, and then the mouths. Just dreadful. I'm so glad my niece isn't like that. Or my niece-in-law. They're not like that. I don't know what, what causes people to be like that. S they're spoiled. That's what it is. They're spoiled. I bump into them sometimes when I'm DJing or doing karaoke nights. They want it and they want it now, whatever that happens to be. Can I sing next time? You'll have to wait. Oh, why not? Why not? It's not your turn yet. And then they start getting angry. 
and start hurling abuse at you. I've had that before. Been called all sorts of names because I won't put them on next. No, you'd bloody well join the queue, same as everyone else. Cheek. So that was that programme. Do try and give that one a watch. Can't pay, we'll take it away. <laughs> Some of this are really good. And, you know, you watch this and you think, this, some of these people deserve what's coming to them. Others don't. Others seem to have fallen on hard times and they can't afford something. At this very moment, um, I was talking to someone this week who will remain nameless. And he's just moved into a place with his other half and um it was all and he suddenly lost his job and he's got no money at all what happened is that he was he became ill for a couple of days took a couple of days off work and then he went back and they sacked him for having a couple of days off work because he was ill he's gone down to the job center and they won't give him money for 26 weeks because he was sacked what does he do? Can't pay the rent. The landlord is now on him. They bought a couple of items and they can't afford, to, can't, haven't got the money to pay for those now. And the other day they bought some food, but the oven's out of order so they can't cook it. What the hell does he do? The advice I gave him was to start immediately knocking on doors, even just walking into pubs and bars to get, get some money, get something. <coughs> Terrible. You see, so some people do actually fall on hard times, and I feel for them. I do feel for them. I couldn't give advice because I've, oh, I've been very, very lucky over the years never to really have been in that situation. I, I left school and I, bang, I went into work and I kept working ever since. More recently, of course, I've lost two karaoke jobs, Monday and Wednesday, so I've got Monday and Wednesdays off now. But it's it's not it's not gonna, you know, do me in. I've got a little bit less money, yes, but it's okay because I, I was always so careful with my money over the years. Then again I am fifty one now. You know, so that money's do you know what I mean? Whereas he or they are in their twenties. They don't have that behind them. What, 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 what does it? I don't know what he does. I really don't. I advised him to go down the Citizens Advice Bureau. How else can you advise someone if you, you haven't actually been in that situation? Very, very difficult. Um, Daniel says, It is said that buy-to-let landlords have driven up the prices up as they buy the one- and two-bedroom properties that the first-time buyers are trying to buy. Oh, I totally agree with you, Daniel. I think that's uh, a lot to do with it. I think the reason that one-bedroom flats are now so expensive is because landlords have bought them up, like myself. But the reason I went into it, I was left money from my mother and father. You know, I always want to make that clear. That the reason I have properties is because of the money my mother and father spent their entire lives working for. Other people, you know, they uh, they walk into the pubs, you know, oh, I've got this, this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, but they never, they never give the um, the thanks to their parents, the credit to their parents. And other people, you know, might have paid off, paid off their house. Oh yeah, I've paid off my house now. I'm so pleased about that. They neglect to tell me uh, to tell you that a relative has died and left them a son of money, and that's how they paid for it. Don't give me all that old crap. Give them the credit. Give them the credit. You know, if someone else has paid off that mortgage, give them the credit. Not you, them. I was very, very lucky. With my house I'm in now, I paid... And my father saw me finish paying for this, and I'm, I'm quite pleased that he saw that. But the properties I have were due to my mum and dad. That's what I did with the money. Um, wanted something. Didn't, didn't know what else to do with it. I'm not a... Uh, 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 a person who requires um, status symbols or anything like that, posh cars or big this or big that. It's nice, nice, some of these 
cars and beautiful things and if that's your thing then fine I don't desire things like that I don't desire big posh holidays you know I don't desire those if I do go on holiday I like to pay for the um, better seat in the plane just for comfort nothing to do with status or anything like that it's nothing worse than sitting in an economy seat in the back of a plane for like eight hours that is just horrendous nothing to do with children screaming or food or anything like that it's the leg room it's the leg room i feel really physically ill when i'm sitting in those chairs so you know i i pay for the better ones and if i can't if i couldn't afford to go in those better seats then simply i just wouldn't go end of But these people, you know, they suddenly start flying all over the world. Oh, look what I can do. Yeah, hang on a minute. Someone, so your parents have paid for that. Give them the credit. Don't come there and tell me that. That annoys me. Um, Matt says, I think you'll find the Conservatives will do very well with the housing idea. I, I think so as well. They've gone for the young vote there. I know that if I was in the market for a new house and had the possibility of a discount, it'd be enough to earn my vote. I've actually emailed my local Conservative Member of Parliament with such ideas in hopes of passing it on with the argument that with everything else going up so much, it's becoming harder every day for young people to have a home of their own. Yes, it is. I mean, it really is. And part of the reason, as Daniel says, is because landlord bought up were, were, were and are still although I don't anymore are still buying up the one bedroom flats as they come out they buy those and then rent them out but that's the system Daniel what do you do look at the one bedroom flats and say oh no no we'll leave that because if I buy that it might go up and then young people might not be afford to unfortunately we don't think like that do we I think how fast this have gone up um, far too high. A lot of that's to do with the estate agents. You know, they will push and push and push. But at some point, I'm sure it will get to the stage where people just won't, can't afford to buy. And then they will come down on their own again, as they always do at some point. March says the Koran does not condone beheading, Chris. They are just following their book to the letter. Here is one verse, Quran 8.12, which says, When your Lord revealed to the angels, I am with you, therefore make firm those who believe. I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieve. Therefore strike off the heads and strike off every fingertip of them. So, so are you saying they do um, say that, are you, Marge? I think, perhaps there. Okie doke. I think that's all today, boys and girls. Let me have a look. Oh, except to say, you know that, oh, I've, I've got a house, back to the house and again, I've got this house up north. Oh, it's always having some sort of problem with it. It's a blooming pain. I would sell it, actually, this, this house up north I've got um, in Lincolnshire, not too far from my sister's, because it's just one thing after, and there's always something going wrong there. The latest thing, the latest thing is um, uh, they've got a blooming wasp's nest now in their attic. A wasp's nest. In the attic, dear. Ugh. It's one thing after another. So, of course, you know, now I've got to send someone up there to deal with it. Deal with the wasp's nest. Uh, we've had a leaking toilet uh, this week as well. We've had tiles coming off the bathroom. Uh, we've had a fence blown down. This is all in the last year. Um... We've had a leaking pipe from the bar. I don't know who put the bathroom in. The, bu the b leaking pipe in the bathroom underneath. Uh, there was something wrong with the boiler last year. Oh, it's just a constant. And it's that one house constantly has been a bloody problem. It really has. And it's actually worth less now than what I paid for it. Otherwise, I'd let it go. If it had made, you know... I don't know, a little bit of money, maybe 10%. I would have got rid of that by now. When it starts making money, when it's made a certain amount, I've got an idea in my head. What it, when it gets to that level, I will sell that straight away because I'm sick to death of it. Always something going wrong with that one. <laughs> See, it's not all plain sailing as a landlord, boys and girls, is it? Anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you very much for joining me as always, boys and girls. Once again, my email address, if you want to join in, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. UK. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk 
uk. Thanks so much for watching and listening. I'll see you in one of the short videos on Monday. And the, to watch those, again, go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Have a lovely Saturday. Bye-bye now.